This seems pretty self-explanatory, but warning, drinking and the use of power tools is highly inadvisable. Know your limits before attempting anything from this show. Or don't. I'm not your mother. Then I build it all back from scratch with my hammer in it. Welcome back to another and very long overdue episode of Hammer and Ales, the show where I drink and review different, sometimes exotic beers, build things, and fix broken shit. Today, we're going to be working on this. This piece of wood I acquired a long time ago. I'd say every bit of eight, eight or nine years ago, probably eight years ago. Um, I believe it is ash, but what it is, it's the center of a tree. And uh, by that, I mean um, right as the tree would basically branch out, um, you know, most of the way up. There's one, two, three, four, like five different hearts or branches that came out of it. So this was right here, right at the top, right as the tree was getting ready to branch out. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to use a router sled, router it down flat, flip it over, do the same, and we're gonna make an end table out of it. Okay, so here what we have is my slab flattening jig and my one and a quarter horse um, router Bosch router here with a two inch slab flattening bit. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple of measurements, set this to the right height, and uh, we're gonna start from one end and, and work to the next. And as you can tell here, this is not level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shim it in a couple of spots with these little shims, and then I'm going to actually adhere it to the table using just some quick cyanoacrylic fancy word for super glue, uh, and um, some of this activator spray. And that'll help keep this still while we mill it down. After looking at this, um, this is definitely ash. So it's got neat grain right here in the center. I can't wait to get this whole thing slabbed down and then uh, flip it over, do the same, and then just sand it and, and see what we come up with. This is starting to look awesome. I can't wait. Okay, well this side has been milled down. Um, this one looks like I gotta work on. It looks like it's cockeyed a little bit, but regardless of that, what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, run a belt sander over this, probably some like maybe 60, possibly 40 grit. And uh, I'll do that before I flip it over and we'll just probably do one pass on the other side. And in doing so, that will help us uh, uh, that'll help us keep everything, you know, flat, nice and flat. So I know over here, I didn't quite get, uh, all, all the way milled down, but, um, the belt sander should take care of that. No problem. So, uh, here we go. Belt sanding. First, let's vacuum up this mess. Thank you. 
Okay, we got this side nice and flat, ran the belt sander over it, made it smooth, knocked down a lot of the high edges. What we're gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and break loose the shims and the glue. We're going to flip it, run the router jig again, maybe the belt sander again, and uh, just work with what thickness we have there. Um, maybe maybe three inch thickness, something like that. Uh, won't be too bad. Once that's finished, we'll work on uh, setting the base for our epoxy mold. Well, we got a dilemma. We either pick beauty on this side because it looks really awesome and pretty and just the grains are nice, or we pick character right here. Just uh, the way we got a lot of checking. I don't know, this side looks awesome. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and think it over while I do a couple of passes with the orbital sander and then uh, We'll, we'll go from there. All right, now it's time for my favorite part. Mystery beer. Okay, we got a tall boy can. <laughs> no indication of what it is. Wrapped up pretty good in duct tape. Let's uh let's go ahead and give her our first crack here. Alright, see how it smells. Mmm. Smells fruity. Uh, oh, that's good. Um, definitely, that's one of those cider beers. I don't know what kind it is, but I can definitely tell it's one of them. So first impressions is uh, it's a sweet cider beer. Um, maybe something I've had before. I'm not quite sure, but... Uh, um, Sweet, definitely a cider. But let's get back to our project and we can come back to this here in a little while. Okay, we got the top of our table prepared, sanded, everything's good, nice and flat. What we're getting ready to do now is start the mold for us to put this in so we can pour epoxy over it. Okay, to make this uh, epoxy mold, what we're gonna need is we're gonna start out with this here, which is a half inch piece of uh, OSB plywood. Um, a lot of people I see use like that masonite board. Uh, we're not gonna use it just because that stuff can tend to be a little expensive. So I had this scrap piece of OSB. Um, we're gonna need some of this, which is just your standard typical uh, plastic lawn edging. Um, we're gonna use this as well. This is a uh, GE Advanced Silicone, 100% waterproof, 30 minute rain dry time. And we're gonna use that to uh, seal off the edges. You'll see what I'm talking about. And then on top of this, we're actually going to fasten this piece of uh, polyethylene plastic. It's normally for walls and ceilings, but this will do exactly what we want it to do. So it is a little textured, but we're gonna sand it and it should be fine. Um, and uh, first things first, we're gonna lay the tabletop on top of it and trace it. Okay. 
Okay, so you probably wonder, Mark, have you ever done this before? The answer is absolutely not. You're probably thinking, is this even gonna work? Don't know, doubt it. Uh, and you're probably wondering, are we gonna do it anyway? You're damn right we are. delicately file this away. Perfect. Okay, now what we're gonna do is flip this over like this. We are going to take the little lip that is here on this uh, landscape edging. And I will take these little, I think they're 5 5.8 um, tack nails. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that lip right on the edge of this, tack one down, and conform it to all of the uh, curves of this piece of plywood. I'm pretty good at laying the caulk, if I do say so myself. Um, this says it's a 30 minute dry time caulking. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to come back, look at it in about 30 minutes, and see what the deal is, if it's dried, cured, or what have you. Um, if not, what we'll do is uh, uh, maybe just we'll just wait it out. Wait it out for a day, perhaps, and then tomorrow we can lay the tabletop in here and pour the epoxy and go from okay. there. We got our epoxy mold built and our uh, tabletop here is ready to go. Um, I decided to choose this very character side. Uh, it's got some neat checking and cracks in it. I think we're going to go ahead and make that the top of this. Um, so let's go ahead and get to making and pouring the epoxy. Uh, but first, here's another update on the mystery beer. Now it's time for the second update of the mystery beer. Well, as far as color goes, this is incredibly light. Um, you can see that against the uh, background of my workbench, you could barely tell what it was. And then even against the background of my shirt, you can tell that it's pretty light in color. Um, as far as flavor goes, it is delicious. It's very drinkable, very drinkable. Um, perhaps a hot day beer. Um, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if I already knew what it was. But um, man, this is really good. Definitely like it. Tastes good. Goes down smooth. Very light, but um, sweet. Got a little sweet hint at the end and crisp. Um, let's keep going with our project. Okay, so here I started to have some microphone trouble. So I'm just gonna do a voiceover from for this section. What I'm doing is explaining that it's a nice day outside. So I opened the door so we could have good ventilation and that uh, this brand of epoxy is called Tea Expert and it is a two to one mix ratio. So two resin to one hardener. And what that does is it allows the epoxy to release heat slower. It'll allow it to cure 
for a little bit longer and give us a little bit longer uh, work time to knock out any bubbles or any blemishes that go on. So it gives us a little bit of leeway and doesn't cure very fast. I actually wanted to show you guys a close up of this green on this piece of ash. Um, I definitely love the character in this wood. And I think when we use the epoxy on it, it's going to make all of these little uh, imperfections, if you will, just stand out. I guess it's got a little face in it too, but um, cool. All right, so here we go. I'm about to mix the epoxy and put it in the mold and get to going. Okay, so I'm having continued microphone trouble here, um, and what I'm doing is just explaining that uh, I put some duct tape over the mold, so it would just kind of help keep the shape on the ends. The epoxy was getting a little heavy, and it was pushing it out and bowing it out in certain parts. Um, there are still a lot of bubbles, and I'm just going to sit here and babysit this and use my torch to knock out all of those bubbles. Well, I got good news and bad news. The good news is the epoxy cured pretty good. Uh, the bad news is this. Bubbles all over it. And then I actually had a piece of duct tape that went from here to here to try to keep the, uh, the mold steady and not all warped out. And uh, it fell in and during uh, last night, I babysat it for a long time. I sat here and was just like, I'm babysitting and using the heat torch and everything. And I had to go to baseball, softball for the kids and uh, came back and this is what we were left with. As you can tell, I'm probably not happy with it. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to do the only thing I know how and that's try and fix it. We're going to sand the top of it, try to get some of those bubbles down as much as we can. And when our second order of epoxy comes in, we'll uh, mix it up and pour it on top. And hopefully that new layer will fix all of our blemishes. We'll let it cure for another day and we'll come back at it and hopefully we can save it. Okay, so here's what I plan to do. I got 320 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna go and uh, sand all this down as much as I can. Make sure I have my dust mask because this is gonna be a little messy. Um, here's kind of a little tip. If you get the little dust bag wet on your sander, it'll help keep everything in there and it won't uh, blow all of the dust out, any of the smaller fibers. Um, just get it damp, no big deal on there. But uh, what that's... This is where we're at. Hopefully it works. We're gonna try to knock down everything that we can knock down, get it in good shape. I'm going to use my uh, air compressor to try to blow all of this off. From the looks of it, there's not a whole lot bad down on the edges and sides, but uh, I won't know entirely until I pull it. So this is definitely a, a learning curve. I've never done this before. Um, but hey, this is this is what we do. We learn. That's why we watch shows like this. And uh, you know, I'm I'm glad that you stick around, whether you learn something or not. <laughs> so here we go. One thing I do want to point out is if you see these little halos right here on the bubbles, um, I did learn this, did find this out, and I think it's quite useful. Um, that means that you have a raised area between the two, or excuse me, a depression between the two. So right there and right here where that sandpaper went over, that clear halo 
indicates that there's like a, a, a depression. So almost like a, a volcano. So there's peak and then the base and then right here it kind of comes up. So these two meet and um, that's what we're going on there. So I'm gonna sand all this down to where it is all this opaque looking and uh, get rid of all these high spots. So that's my, that's my goal. All right, well, our second pour is finished. And uh, I just wanted to show you this real quick. This is the base for this end table that I bought. Um, I think it's like a 14 inch disc here. It's gonna sit about 16 inches high. We'll put the legs on it and then it mounts on the bottom side as it does. But our, uh, our tabletop is in pretty good shape. We got a couple of minor blemishes on top this is what it looks like. What we're gonna do is I'm going to remove the mold that I made and uh, we'll assess what's going on from there and um, probably give, you know, do a little bit of extra work, router the edges, just kind of shape everything up, give one last sanding coat, or excuse me, one last sanding, and then uh, a top coat of epoxy just to fill in these last little blemishes, and um, we'll, be, we'll be on our way. Oh boy, did I screw up. <laughs> okay, well, there's actually two different sides to this. One side is uh, a lot smoother and one is pretty textured. I didn't quite realize that when doing it, but you know, this is the creative process. I have never done this before. Um, maybe I should have known better, used a little bit of more forethought, but why edit it out when you can learn from my mistake? That's kind of how I feel about it. So uh, you can watch me struggle so you don't have to in the uh, in the future. So really what I'm doing is it seems to be working. I'm going to be using my torch here and my putty knife and I'm just going to slowly scrape away what I can until all of this is off and <laughs> we'll go from there. Okay, so as it stands, uh, I'm a little bit down about it. I um, almost threw in the towel. Uh, I just felt like maybe I was a little defeated. So I'm not gonna give up because I know we're right there near the end. Maybe the slightest bit of good news is that I haven't put my logo in this. So um, right now gives me the opportunity to do that. And um, I think we'll, uh, I'll, I'll just stick her right here and we'll go from there. Well, that didn't work, so I have another idea.
I don't necessarily say I'm admitting defeat because I think it's it's really awesome. Um, just not quite what I anticipated, and there was a lot of uh, a learning curve. It was a massive learning curve, especially for doing it my first time. And like I said, um, these are the rules not to follow. I feel like I should have done a really thin coat around everything first, like with a paintbrush, um, and allowed it to cure that way, and then did my epoxy pouring. Um, but as it stands, it's actually in out of your bud. It's actually in really good shape, and um, I'm just gonna do one last pour on it, let it dry, put the base on, and I think we are. I think we're finished. Well, here it is, the final coating of epoxy on this uh, end table, and man, does it look great. I mean, there's very, very little, very little blemishes from when it sat to dry. There's like some small pieces on it that, uh, you know, it wasn't in like a massively dust controlled environment, but it looks really good. Um, it's time to put the base and the legs on and then get our final, final review of the mystery beer all right all right well here we are with the back side of this end table um it does look pretty messed up just in like some of these spots actually these little drips are fine for me because i like that aspect um but as far as like these little uh, these little bits here dips a couple of bubbles um i'm gonna leave it because the risk to redo it outweighs the reward in my eyes but it's on the bottom top looks great nobody's really going to be laying on the bottom looking at it uh do i think it's a half-assed job not really I, I just think the time put into it is just not going to be worth the outcome in the end because that will cover up a lot and uh it'll be on the bottom so that's just kind of what we're looking at so here is the base of our uh table all right, and here are the instructions. So let's go ahead and put this together. Okay, well here it is in all of its glory. And uh, I just recently learned that the place where I got it from, the lady who gave it to me, uh, actually works in the same town that I live in. So guess who's getting a new end table? She has no idea about this. So come on, let's go. Here we go, got the uh, table in tow back there. And like I said, um, she works right down the streets. Um, I'm going to drive there, put this camera down, and then I'll start back up when um, when I get there. All right, we just pulled in, trying to find a good place to park here. Hopefully, she's as surprised as I think she's going to be. I don't know how this is going to go, so we're just uh, we're just going to give it a shot. That's all we do here take shots and try to figure it out she doesn't want to be on camera but I think she's gonna like it no way yeah no way absolutely look at that wow absolutely wow it's beautiful oh my goodness it's yours if you want it no absolutely are you kidding swear to you oh my 
my gosh, you're kidding me. Nope. Yes. I made it. This is a this is the project I, I just did on my full episode of my show that I do my woodworking and everything. And uh, it was my plan the entire time to do this. Long oh, time. That so. is beautiful. So it is yours if you want it. I get a picture of that. I want to show you. Absolutely. It's that. Wow, so, I'm so excited. You're That's totally beautiful. welcome. So like I said, I didn't uh she didn't want to be on camera, which I'm totally cool with, but I, I figured she was going to love it. So there it is. I do so. love it. That is absolutely... I knew awesome. that was going to make something awesome. Uh, well, it's actually back here still. Her car wasn't big enough for her to take it home yet, so I'll drop that off later. But uh, let's go back inside, find out what our mystery beer is, and uh, end this episode. The final update on the mystery beer. Um, delicious, clean, crisp, light color. Um, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a cider of some sort. Um, really great drinking beer. I think this is an all weather beer. Um, and if I had to guess, it's a very, very iconic flavor. Uh, well, let's see what we have. Figured as much. Angry Orchard Hard Cider Crisp Apple. Angry Orchard Crisp Apple has a bright, crisp apple flavor. Just like biting into a fresh apple, it is a perfect balance of sweetness, bright acidity from culinary apples, and uh, dryness of traditional cider making apples, resulting in a complex yet refreshing hard cider. Well, as far as uh, beer goes, I kind of knew what that was just because that flavor is iconic. It's delicious. If you aren't into the cider beers, it's obviously not going to be your thing. But if you like it, you know, and you know what this is all about. Um, super delicious. Let's go over and uh, give it a rating. Okay, well, here's a look at the can. Um, I dented the crap out of it just taking the tape off, but... Like I said, Angry Orchard, um, hard cider, crisp apple. If you know, you know. A great drinking beer. I mean, I've had plenty of good nights drinking a 12-pack uh, of that stuff. So, um, for me, uh, I would go ahead and give Angry Orchard, crisp apple, hard cider a one, two, three, and four hammers on the hammer and nails rating scale and the reason for that is for me it's just a tad too sweet it tends to be sweet um for a long time it doesn't really go away as you keep drinking it um not to say that it's not delicious i absolutely love it but for me it's not something i would drink over and over and over again but definitely when the mood strikes you perfect great uh outdoor beer great get together beer um in general i i really have no complaints complaint that i have is that it can be too sweet for too long but other than that it's fantastic it's a great beer well that's a wrap for this episode of hammer and nails i hope you guys had as much fun watching as i did making this episode we got our angry orchard hard cider crisp apple stuff is delicious go get yourself some and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already give me a thumbs up and comment your favorite part of this episode in the comments below because it is the best way to support what I do on this channel. And thank you for watching where every episode is made with blood, sweat, and beers. I hope to see you next time on Hammer and Ales.